Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, Paul here again. I'm in the middle of making some uh, leads uh, for my awesome carbon fiber off-road DIY board. I've got some neat results here. I'm very happy with them actually <laughs> because it is painful, or at least it was for me uh, at the start, to solder XT90s and XT60s, especially XT90s, on larger cables like the uh, 12 gauge that I'm using, sorry, 10 gauge that I'm using at the moment. So I thought to myself, I got last connection to make. Why not to make a video on how I'm, I'm doing this, just in case if you're going to help someone out out there. I'm all, I'm all for DIY and I love doing things myself. If you guys obviously my subscribers, you know that. If you guys are fresh to my channel, take a look. I got tons of videos and you'll see what I'm all about. So. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm not saying it's the perfect way. I'm not saying it's the best way. This is just how I do it and it works for me. So it's up to you. So now let's take a look step by step. What do I do if I have to solder on XT90 to a large 12 gauge or 10 gauge cable. So before I solder anything up, obviously you will need the soldering iron. The soldering iron I'm using is 80 watt it's just enough uh, to do large uh, joints like the uh, 10 gauge cables so before I turn the uh, soldering iron on I'm using some plumbing uh, wire wool or like a cleaning pad and I clean the tip of the soldering iron from all that soot and black layer that was created while I was soldering earlier if that doesn't help, you can always use a blade and just scrape all this naughty stuff off because all this suit works just like a coat that you put in the winter. It stops the heat transfer. So, quite nice and shiny. You almost see the copper. Yeah, now we're going to apply a bit of uh, soldering flux on it. Again, guys, this is just me. You don't have to follow that. Now it goes on the stand and gets plugged in. I hate this little chip stand, they always fall over. So sometimes I actually use the uh, grips and uh, make it a bit heavier. So, make sure it doesn't touch anything. It's now warming up. And I'm gonna put something underneath this tip here because it will start dripping soon. Dripping the solder, uh, the flux, sorry. So, next thing you do is you cut the cables to the length you require. You will also cut the insulation back just enough to get into the connector on the XT90. I'm using the electrical uh, cutting pliers. I love tools, so I've got one of them. That's a backhoe, quite good quality. I think it's Swiss. If you don't have these, you can always use a normal blade. Just be careful. You cut all the way around and just peel it off. It's quite simple. What we need to do first is we need to tin these cables. So that's a fancy way of saying I'm going to put some solder on these cables here. So because I'm using the same colors cables in the uh, single sleeve, what I'm going to do is, this is just for my project guys, Use different colors if you can. I'm just going to find the positive on this side. So just bail out the cables on the continuity test just to make sure that my positive matches. Okay, it's that one there. Let's mark it so we know this one here is positive. This is because I already have done the first plug, so it just needs to match. Otherwise, you will have a little boom. 
and I don't like electrical booms. So the soldering line is now smoking up nice, it's getting that tip nice and clean. As soon as it starts uh, smoking like that, I use a wire, wire brush and clean the tip off even further. Again guys, you don't have to, that's just me. You just can use a bit of sandpaper and make sure the, sol the soldering iron tip is nice and clean. It's going to turn all black anyway, but at least I'm not going to have that coating. So now, firstly, we're going to tin this tip. So we need some solder and we need the flux. So I'm going to warm the flux up in a tin. And as soon as it becomes all uh, liquidy, I'm dipping both tips in the flux. Now, we've got the solder ready and the solder iron ready. What I'll do is I normally just press the solder iron up against the cut of the cable and start warming it up. You will see that the flux is now melting, it's getting itself everywhere it's required. And now you introduce the solder and voila, we are all tint. You will see the solder disappearing between the strands of the cable. That's a good sign. Now the second one. Warming up, the flux is melting. At this point we introduce the solder. And look at that. Opa! Gone. So now we have successfully tinned the cable edges. If at any point you can see that the soldering iron ain't not warming up the uh, cable as good as it used to, that's because of all this black soot that's just now collated from all the flux. Give it a quick rub while it's still hot. With the sandpaper, but be careful because it will be hot. Or, in my case, with just a cheap brush. So the next step, make sure that you know which one is your positive, which one is your negative. Make sure you use this little clip. That's what's going to cover these connections. After you solder it, you're going to clip this on. So don't forget to put them on over the cables before you solder them on. Okay, that's out of the way. Make sure you know what connector you need. In my instance, I do need the male. Make sure you know which one is positive and negative on the connector to match the cable you just marked up. So I've got this one is my positive, positive, negative. This is because I don't have the color code guys. This is the only reason why I'm doing this. So now I've got this little tool here, full reviews on my channel. I'm inserting the the connector I need to install into the relevant XT90 slot. Done. This is just my recommendation. Use a female side of it, of the connector as well. When you solder, put them together. The reason for it is because you apply a lot of heat and sometimes these are uh, connect this inside actually move and the distance between them changes and then it's going to be really hard to actually use the connector because it's going to be kind of not melted but it will change the shape a bit while actually assembling it while soldering keeps everything in line so after it cools off it'll be fine that's a little gadget very nice so I also use some heavy wise grips just to give this little tool a bit of weight so now when it's sitting on my table and I'm trying to work with it pressing cables at it it doesn't move around 
So what I'll do is, I'll just turn this this way so you can see it. So now what we need to do is, guys, is we need to tin the connector itself. Warm up the flux, solder, we we'll put the soldering line inside the connector, give it 5-6 seconds to warm up, and now we're applying the solder with a bit of flux in there. And because the connector is nice and warm, and the flux is there, it will take in the flux quite nicely. So now we have pretend the connector, beautiful. Now we're making sure that you see the plus on the connector and the plus that you marked up. Now we are marrying up the cable to the connector and simply resting the soldering iron. Well, I normally solder with my right hand, but just for you guys, I'll try to do it with my left. So now I have been resting the soldering iron on the top of the cable and now the heat will transfer through the cable, through the solder, into the connector and as soon as you see the solder becoming shiny that's when it is the correct temperature almost there almost there bit of smoke coming up everything is becoming nice and shiny so solder on the cable and solder inside the connector needs to become nice and shiny molten now, very important, do not move the cable. Remove the solid iron and cool off. And I just moved it. You see, that's what I said, do not move the cable. I just cold soldered that uh, connection. That's because I'm trying to film at the same time as doing it. So, again bit of more solder into the joint guys it's much easier when you're not trying to film my position is wrong because I'm trying to be on the camera my hands are wrong because I'm a righty not lefty nothing wrong with being lefty by the way they say lefties are all very uh, smart and like different in a good way so again, warming it up until both the solder on the cable and the connector become shiny. I think I might introduce just a little bit more. There we go. Well, this time I cooled it off better. So it's stuck together nice. I saw it becoming all shiny. That is good. So this is your neat connection. Nice and strong. Arrgh, will not pull apart. Beautiful. Now we're going to turn this gadget upside down. We're going to twist the cable upside down. So it's not pulling itself. And we repeat the same process on this side. Don't introduce too much because it will form a massive droplet underneath. Do not move the cable while the solder is still molten, otherwise it will come off. And here we go. We've got two nicely soldered XT9 is to a cable. Now, now while it's still a little bit warm, I'm using the wet rag and wiping off all that axis flux it comes off much easier when she's still warm it's all sticky this flux is so sticky so now the tool comes apart everything in line as you can see everything nicely in line all soldered up nicely now we're going to press this cover inside the XT90. I've noticed sometimes they really don't want to go in straight away but not to worry. I use just a uh, flat lip pliers 
and applying a equal pressure I'm just squeezing them together so the next step is to protect this connection and I'm using a larger uh, shrink tube this one here is 24 to 8 millimeter I'm going to cut the piece just enough to cover the connector and grab onto the cable it goes over the connector just like that and now using the heat gun or your wife's or girlfriend's or boyfriend's hair dryer We're shrink the tube. There we go. Nice and neat, protected. Beautiful. Let's just leave it to leave it to cool off, and we're done. That's it for this how-to. Hope you liked it. Bye. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't. Boom. But tell me why the boom. Also subscribe and a little bell next to the subscribe button. Please hit that guys, yeah? Because then my videos will become more live and you see them all.